Good afternoon. Good morning. How are you all doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Hope you're all doing good. And, uh, you know, thanks for being here today. And I thank you each and every week that we get to spend some time together because it's a friendly, we're, we're, it's a friendly atmosphere. You're invited to talk, to comment, to, you know, whatever you like. We're here. I'm here. And we're here together because, you know, we know that um, there's a lot going on out there. And sometimes there's a lot going on in here too, right? So this is a really good place for you to feel safe and comfortable and loved. And thanks for being here. And so today's going to be a fun, let me take that back. It's going to be an interesting show. We're going to talk about a lot of deep things. We're going to talk about some things that emotional things, but we have two of some of my favorite people to be on the show today that I just love to kick back and talk with and stories and just good sharing. Okay. So before we get on with the show, before I introduce my guest to you, I want to say hi to Amnon because without Amnon, I will tell you. Hello, Marilyn. How are you? You are Amnon. You are one of the most loyal colleagues, people, friends, brothers I have. So I want to thank well, you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. You doing all right? Doing just fine. Yeah, it's been a long, little, a long time since I I've know. seen my Amnon. I, I know. <laughs> I, but one day we'll we'll be together again. And this is a, a thankful week, right? Thank God for whatever we have. Thank goodness for where we are. I mean, I am just thankful that I get to do this and you know, I'm not going to see my children too much this week, but I'm thankful that um, we want to see each other. So I love you all. I'm glad you're here. Put your name under the video. Join us in, uh, in the chat anytime you want. Ask questions, comment, whatever you feel like. Go bleh. That's okay, too. Call us anytime you want at 919-518-9773. Or you can come in on Skype Voice and join the party. Join the conversation. Anytime you want it. Computers, that's plural, then the number 2K voice. That will be voice, not video. We'd love to have you. Come on in. I mean, let's just like talk. Don't you feel like it sometimes just to kind of like let it all hang out? And that's what we're going to do. So let me introduce my friends, my guests today. So we have a, a Flo Moses. Welcome. Hello. How are it's you? great to be here. It's good to have you here. I love it when you're here. Thank, Thank you. Them. Thanks for being here. And we have Howie Sheriff. Hey, Howie, how are you? Well, I'm out experiencing the autumn weather, and it's inspiring to be outside and refreshing. Thank goodness here the weather is so good, too. I mean, it's a little freaky, but it's good. Yes. I'm in between seasons. I have a jacket and light pants. So it's my hot and my cold. Uh, yeah. We'll see as the show goes on. Yeah, it helps us be out when the weather is like 60s and 70s and sunny and bright, even though I don't know if November should be this good, but you know, I'm glad we have an opportunity to go out. So one of the, th so our topic today is this, this idea about mountains, you know, climbing this mountain. And I was so, um, I laughed when you sent me the music for Donovan you know, about mountain, is there a mountain? Then there isn't a mountain. And is there a mountain? And then, and I guess that's a perception, right? So we're going to talk about those mountains that molehills that we, you know, we look at whether we're going to climb them or maybe they're just a mountain and we don't want to climb them. So um, let me, I'm going to start with Flo. Is that all right with you? Howie? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Flo, because mountains, how do you, what do you, how do you define that? Well, you know, I think it depends on your frame of mind at the time. A, a mountain, for me, a mountain is a welcome challenge most of the time if I'm in the right frame of mind. And if I know what mountain I'm trekking up or down. Um, but so to me, it's, it's something welcome most of the time if it's a known type of thing. But I really think the mountain depends on how you perceive it. A mountain could be something for me also that I just don't want to do, and therefore it appears ginormous. Um, 
and I don't know. It's all about perspective. I I, I like mountains, <laughs> and and I'm at a place right now that that I do like them, um, but not sure which next one I'm supposed to chat uh, to you know trek up. Hmm. Okay, so, so you always say wise things. So we're going to come back to that because that's a big conversation about, you know, what's next up the mountain or what mountain is next, right? Mm -hmm. So let, let me, let's hear from Howie and, and how you describe a mountain to you. Yes, well, it's, it, it's an interesting metaphor. Uh, and personally, I've, I've felt the inverse of a mountain and that I feel that I'm trying to crawl out of a crater. And that from things that we've lost this year as an organization, uh, personally that I've invested in, blood, sweat, and tears, and also familial loss, and feeling my heart has been cratered, lost my father. So climbing the mountain uh, comes, you know, on different scales for me, but it feels a crater. I felt like when our event got canceled in March and all our programming, that really cratered all this initiative and growth for 10 years. And then someone so near and dear that's been part of my life for intimately for many months before the pandemic just wound up passing away in July. So that was an, you know, an extracting sort of thing. And what it's come to now is that sense of Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the mountain. So it's not just moving the mountain, it's moving up the mountain and that sort of experience. Yeah, I can relate to everything you both have said, because I, I am feeling this mountain thing too, where you know I just um, helped to facilitate this summit and it got, and was a year of things. And, but going through that during that period of time, there were other things that were not so comfortable and things that I had to deal with. And then once this, you know, this summit was over, those other things even like became even more like a little more painful because I didn't have the, you know, the, the summit was, I, you know, I couldn't just jump into it and like forget certain things, you know, I had to deal with other things. So it's been an interesting uh, time. And I, and this metaphor of a mountain, you know, for me has, it's, it, it's, it's taught me about patience. And, and even more, like I love, you know, my thing is listening. So I've really like turned it on with, you know, to really see, okay, like I'm okay. I'm okay. I have to keep telling myself I'm okay. And, and you know, what's, what's next for me or just staying where I am and just kind of gliding or who needs what now? Like who needs something now? Like that I'm able to support. Because, you know, even if I feel yucky some days, I, I'm not debilitated. And so who is feeling worse than me that might need something? I mean, we, you know, we're, you know, we're in all this together. And, it, and I feel, you know, I feel for other people. So, um, and I know, Flo, you have had, you know, a, a big change during a big time. I'm sure it wasn't exactly planned. Maybe it was, I don't know, but maybe you can tell us. Yes, um, I recently retired um, at the end of September and it was um, sort of planned, sort of not as soon as it happened. And it, it was all good that it occurred, but because it somewhat occurred quickly, I realize now I did not have the opportunity to prepare my brain, my mind, my heart for it. Um, and I was actually just thinking about the whole mountain metaphor. It's almost like I was trekking away at this mountain and then I quickly rappelled down so quickly, so fast that I didn't even have time to take some rocks with me, if that makes sense. I don't know. It, um, it, it, yes, I have experienced significant change in my life and I find myself feeling all kinds of emotions. Um, I actually feel guilty a lot because I am a professed workaholic and I'm not going to work every single day. Um, 
And then I feel guilty because everybody you meet says, congratulations, and they're so excited for you. And, um, you know, so, so I feel guilty that I don't feel happy at that very moment. So that's really challenging. Um, so it's interesting how much built guilt you can have in something that's supposed to be so good, as well as other emotions too. Yeah, and I, I, one of the things you said was you didn't have time to plan. I don't know if we, if if you you could have even a plan for some of the things. It's not there's no no such thing as time. Time doesn't exist in those kinds of things. I mean, I guess you plan as much as you you know of, as much as you can think of, and then the rest just kind of hits you in the face. You wouldn't know what to, to do. How long did you work, Flo? Oh my goodness. It, how do you define that? I, I mean, I think of myself as working since I was 10 years old. I really do because um, in the summers I worked on the farm and certainly um, when I graduated from high school, went to college, worked while I was in college every summer and just never took a break other than three maternity leaves, which were pretty short as maternity leaves go. I mean, six weeks, eight weeks, and 10 weeks. And so um, a long time, however you wanted to find that, I guess formally, at least 39 years, um, but I think of it more as like 40, at least 49 years, quite honestly. It's pretty interesting, isn't it, um, all of you out there? Because when you listen to Flo and you know, talk to Howie some more in a minute. When you listen to Flo and you hear that she's been working all this time and did not take the like three month maternity leave and went all that stuff and just has been working and then finds herself retired during the pandemic, which changes things. I mean, it's one thing when you're going to retire as, you know, as a rocket ship and, you know, you retire in a normal day and time when you can maybe do other things that you will cannot do during a pandemic. So it's very interesting. And yeah, I mean, I, I am a rocket ship myself and I'm not retired, but I am a rocket ship. When I was giving birth um, in the delivery room, I was talk, I owned a furniture store then. And I was on the phone with my delivery men while I was in delivery because they needed help delivering furniture. And I was the only one that knew about it. And I was on the phone, you know, talking to them, making sure everything was going to go well. So, you know, that kind of energy, you know, although that kind of, I won't even call it ethic because I'm not sure it's so good, but <laughs> that kind of energy and that kind of will, and I actually love working, right? It, it, you know, during these kinds of times, it's not an easy, it's a, it's a juggle. It's a juggle to kind of like glide a little. So, um, Howie, what do you, what are you saying? Well, I can appreciate Flo's experience in the sense of uncertainty. Uh, that's been pervasive for so long. And, and even the uncertainty of how am I going to heal? What's it going to be like? When I had to exit my career due to disability and only had a short amount of time to plan. But in that sense of being a very driven individual, uh, and this is in uh, roughly about 2006 or so, uh, I was developing what I thought was some yoga wellness business to facilitate whatever else I was doing in my career. And then once I had to have surgeries and they didn't go well, uh, and it was complicated, uh, once I came back, I was a nutcase on trying to find some relevance in the world and get the mountain going of who am I at 52 and not a career anymore uh, and where people used to come to me and I'm just uh, adrift. So there was a lot of fuel spent trying to get something going and people would scratch their heads going, what's he about? Because I had the room to do it and it was a different era. I was a little ahead of the yoga tide in terms of accessible yoga. So now it's 10 years later plus and uh, Things are coming along, but it's still a big hill and still trying to garner energy and and feel that it's we're relevant and making an impact in the world is uh, such a small step out of the pit of relevance. And I think that's what we all 
struggle is where's our place? Whether you're one's young or middle-aged, you know, I see uh, people with children and I look at that and I say, wow, they're actively parenting. They have a real purpose. You know, they may have a, a, a mountain, but there's a purpose in the mountain. And uh, sometimes it feels like uh, creating that sense of purpose and relevance uh, are that perpetual mountain. And a strategy I have is also to step back and see, well, what's the mountain look like? And we don't have to go over the top of the mountain. I mean, isn't it always about going to the peak? It depends where we want to be. So that's, uh, I think, some of the perspective now as I get recalibrated in life and organizationally is where we want to be and how do I want to be? And it's, uh, it's not an easy time to figure that out. No, it's not. And it's also not a, not a time to give up. It's not a time to give up. I just say that to everybody. Just don't give up. Maybe, you know, you change your path a little. Maybe you change your sights. It doesn't, you don't have to go to the top of the, the mountain. Maybe you just, you got to give yourself credit along the way for, you know, whatever you're able to accomplish, even if it doesn't look the way you thought it was going to look, you know, but before you did it, because we're all on, um, you know, uncharted territory in a lot of ways. And a lot of our identities are kind of messed up. You know, people are working from home that used to work strictly from an office. You know, people used to travel. You know, people did a lot of things that they're not doing now. Eating out or being social. I mean, it is, we are, we are changing. We are all recalibrating. And the, and the thing is, no, none of, you're not alone. You know, you might live alone. You know, maybe you're, you know, doing a lot of things alone, but you are not alone. I promise you have, you have buddies out here and you got to just reach out and, you know, talk about things, share things, you know, but you are, you are not alone. We, you know, we, this has knocked a lot of us to our knees and also created a common thread between all of us that is there. I mean, I love to talk about the invisible lines of connection that exist between all of us. And it is there, if not more now than ever before. And all we, all we need to do is pay it, just know it exists and pay it attention. And you will find a common ground, a common connection, a common something between people. And, and I'm going to tell you the truth. You don't even have to know people to find it. It's right there. And, and for the most part, everybody wants to connect with that invisible line of connection somehow, whether you are the leader of that, whether you follow somebody else in the connection, you know, it's, it's right there. And I highly recommend now more than ever is to, you know, reach out and find it. You know, I, 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 it's important to figure out what you do. Not that you, you know, don't do anything. You know, last week, my daughter, we're Jewish. I've said that before. My daughter is president of the Jewish Federation in Raleigh and Cary at North Carolina, and which I'm just over the moon about. And that's a big deal. And she's got to deal with a lot of, well, all kinds of people. And they did their virtual event last week. And I had the privilege of listening in, of course. I mean, I'm supporting my daughter and the Jewish community. And they had a gentleman on who used to, who was a senator at one time. And he is now the president of all the North American um, federations, the, these organizations. And he said, and of course, this is a little bit of a, of a, a, of a God thing, but take it any way you want. You know, he said, God makes a promise and, you know, it's up to us to take the action. Call it what you want. The universe has, shares all this stuff with us that's out here. I mean, that whether you want to think about it as God or you want to think about it as a, a seed in the ground and a tree comes up, I don't, I don't care. It's all here. It, it, the promise of a tree is here. The promise of, you know, this, you know the, the, all of this being here is here. It's up to us to take the action to use this promise, to take the action 
that we can to the best of our ability. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what that action is, right? So you're going to, you're hearing from three people today and maybe somebody will call and say, this is their action or this is what they want to do. But you're hearing, going to hear from three of us today. And maybe I'm not will even chime in about how vulnerable we are in taking those actions because we don't, I don't know what action, I don't know how it's going to prove, what's going to be proven from the actions I take. Some I know if I reach out and I love somebody, chances are they're going to love me back. But there's no guarantees I'm going to get it that just like that, right? So I don't know. They could be in a bad mood that day or who knows what, right? I can't guarantee I can only do the love. So we're all being vulnerable. And I'm going to share things on a regular basis with you all that you know I'm being really honest and here you go. So, you know, let's talk about those actions because I think, you know, we all need them, right? Howie, you're smiling. Mm -hmm. What are you doing different, Howie? Well, I would say that this week I'm actually celebrating a one year of, no, it's not sobriety. It's meditation, which is like sobriety. Yeah. Not that I was an alcoholic, but I just think of what people announced their anniversaries of. But yeah. I was suffering enough that when someone offered to uh, give me some healing uh, remotely, and I just had to wait for her to do her thing while she was helping me that I just picked up a dormant meditation practice. So uh, I found that just having something grounding in the morning without a clear sense of what it's going to bring, because it brings up discomfort in many ways too, but it gives me the assurance at least I'm doing something for me, even if it's not clear what the results are. And it's, proven practice and I'm not going to likely get injured by it because I'm sitting in a cushion supported way. So that's a new strategy of having a daily meditation for a year. Uh, that's a milestone. Uh, uh, and yeah, doing it, doing something consistently that you don't know that what the benefit is and just like trusting is big. Sometimes that's all we got to do is just trust something that somebody else told us. And we have no idea that it's going to work, but we just trust, right? Yes, it's not a complicated practice, and I'm not putting intentions in there. I'm trying to be open because there's more than I know. So I have a lot, lot more humility and uh, 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 awareness of suffering and other people's suffering. Uh, so empathy quotient is uh, much higher this year. So I just want to... I mean, I don't think we said this really up front because I know you so well. I probably should have said this, but Howie is the executive director of You Call This Yoga, which he's been doing for how long? Well, we've been a nonprofit for 10 years and the origin was probably five years before that. Okay. So just keep in mind, y'all, that this has gone like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, especially in the pandemic. So there are things that Howie's having to do, you know, that are different, but understand that this is a really cool thing and you know we live you know we are local here and of course what we do is global but we're local and there's probably nobody around that doesn't know that has anything to do with yoga that has not heard of howie's organization so keep that in mind right and Flo, i never even asked which we i don't think we we did you either because i just know you so well i just assumed everybody else did too so just back up a second and tell everybody what you you know, the change and what you're doing. What I was doing and what I am now. Um, well, I am the co-founder of Sports and More Physical Therapy. And uh, so now I am the previous or one of the previous owners. So, um, you know, the, the routine that I was in was obviously going to work and being at work and um, seeing some patients, but managing the company, managing people, which I enjoyed even as much as um, uh, seeing the patients, both of these uh, aspects or all of the aspects of running the company was um, very fulfilling for me. Um, but I was thinking about sitting here thinking about, was there anything new that I'm doing? It's only been about eight weeks. So no, not yet. Um, but, but I will say that um, I was thinking of 
some of the ruts I've climbed out of, which are good, but not, they weren't so bad. For example, I love to exercise, but I o always only exercised in the evening when um, I got off work Th during this stage of my life. There have been times in my life when I would get up when my kids were younger and get up very, very early before they would get up. But uh, for the last several years, I would um, exercise and I like to walk, uh, especially now um, out on the different trails. And so you would tend to see the same people and um, probably erroneously make judgments about, oh, those people must work too. And this is the only time they have to, to exercise. And so now I have fun exercising in the warmest part of the day um, because it is a little bit cooler. And one of the things I have noticed and I wanted to share is that whereas previously m most people, I mean, we are in the South, most people would speak or throw their hand up. Now everybody speaks or at least looks to you in the eye and, and acknowledges you. And I think that's a part of reaching out and a coping mechanism, a connection. You talked about connections. Um, and, and I do really feel that um, even more than I ever have. And, and so that has, been, that has been helpful, yet not necessarily going back to what you asked me to talk about, not the same as having those um, confirmed connections every day that I knew when I was gonna go into work, I was gonna say good morning to my front desk person, for example, and they are gonna be there and they were always gonna say good morning. Um, even if they were going to tell me about a problem that they'd already had because they answered the phone and there was a problem with a patient. Um, so, you know, I am missing, again, the certainty of certain connections, but making new connections, which, which is fun. And um, in some cases, a little bit, it, it makes you more vulnerable uh, or you feel more vulnerable anyway, but it's also potentially more fulfilling when you're able to, um, to uh, deliver, if you will. <laughs> no, I think you answered the question perfectly. I mean, yeah, we're taking a look at some of the new things. And if, and if being in a routine of working out at whatever part of the day you did, and now you're changing it, that is a huge, believe me, I know that is a huge deal because I would always work out in the morning. Like is, you know, early or late in the evening. Well, sometimes I don't have to wait till then. I can go out earlier or I can go out at two o'clock in the afternoon and it's okay. Or like Saturday, I went out with my husband like at two o'clock in the afternoon and we took a walk. And normally we wouldn't do that on a Saturday. We would have gotten up like at seven, gone for a couple of, you know, hour walk, come back and been done for the day. But what else have we got to do later on in the day? We're not meeting anybody for dinner, <laughs> right? <laughs> so what difference does it make? The day is a different kind of a day. And I realized that this weekend too. And I also realized about people who are making more eye contact. Hmm. You know? It is. I mean, even in the store, I, I don't know, even in the grocery store, I don't know, people, I feel like people are nicer to each other. Um, and that's a good feeling. Maybe it's because I'm taking more time to acknowledge it, I don't know. I really think about that sometimes, you know, which is it, maybe a little bit of both, whatever, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I am more patient. I mean, I'm taking things, I'm not rushing because where am I rushing to? I don't, I have no place to rush to. So I am much more patient. You know, I have my clients and I do my, my work, but outside of that, you know, I think it's, you know, you kind of like glide a little. This, it's a it's different and uh, it's good to notice you know what you're doing and it's good to notice the changes that you are making and and the ones that are the, the ones that are subtle can have the potential of the greatest amount of change the greatest amount the fact that I don't have to just work out in the more very early or late in the F, late in the, in the night and come home like at 10 o'clock at night uh, and I can work out any time. I don't know if Flo feels this way or Howie, but has changed my like perspective on uh, things in general because I'm 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 more flexible. That has been a huge, just working out in the afternoon at two o'clock has changed me and being more flexible. Where you know I'm, I'm like I notice it's like it's okay. 
I can go out anytime I want. And well, how does that then, what is, how does that, I, you know, how else am I doing that in the rest of my life? Like, just like, whatever, you know, yes, Howie, it, yeah. It's, uh, it is changing the perspective. I have the good fortune of starting to play disc golf and this wonderful retreat called Cedar Hills in Raleigh before the pandemic. And I was going by myself because it wasn't that trendy with my peers. Uh, it's a popular sport and it's just being in nature. And then once the pandemic hit uh, and people were home, more people were coming, but also some of my peers came out. But the point is over the course of the year, not only is the temperature, but also where are the people and how to avoid the people. So in the summer, we're playing at 7.30 in the morning because it's hot and we're older folks and we're distant, but we're you know still out there. And now when people are back in business, we go during the week at two or 1.30 after you know people have come out their lunch break and all the young the younger folks are out there and then on the weekend we don't start later than 8 30 because that's when the crowds start coming out so besides the weather it's also uh where are the people and that creates uh you know how are we going to get our pleasure and still feel safe even as we're walking you know distantly in the woods that uh that creates a a different paradigm each time and to see the seasons change by going to the same place. So the park has a, a recurrent theme um, and also playing disc golf for middle-aged, older, senior guys now. It's an exercise in humility and each throw is different and each day is different. And what are we expecting? Well, we're just trying to eke out some community uh, and share the experience, mm -hmm. even if it's just laughing at each other or enjoying each other. Which is always a good thing. <laughs> Oh yeah. You know, the other thing I've I've been aware of and you know is money. Is the is different ways that money is being spent. Which, you know, more more bringing food home but less eating out barely in the car. I'm not, I'm barely putting gas in the car cuz I'm not going anywhere. Right? And I'm and I badly have gotten like addicted to Amazon, even if I'm buying like a $10 thing, that's a bad thing. What are, what are you noticing about money flow? Anything from you? Well, I'm laughing because, um, you know, even though I used to say I did not like to shop, I must say I did like retail therapy. So what I mean by that is I'm a bargain shopper. So, you know, if, uh, if you'd see on on your phone or whatever, so and so is having this great sale. I was always there, and and so now during the pandemic, you know, it's like, do I really want to do that? I mean, and you couldn't try on clothes, so that was different. And so, um, and then it really made me realize I didn't. I bought things that I didn't really need anyway. Um, as I'm starting to clean out my closet, also because I don't need the same kind of clothes. And I'm starting to think about money in a different way for two reasons. One, because of retirement and just the whole approach. But, um, but also, like you said, yeah, you, you think about what you're spending your money on um, instead of going out for a meal and paying for a bottle of wine and a meal and maybe an appetizer, you know, I mean, that adds up. And so you know, you realize, no, let's make something here and we can do something different with it for the next day and things like that. So there's lots of different aspects of that. Um, fortunately, I haven't yet gotten the Amazon bug and I'm going to try to um, be careful about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely have a different approach. I will say um, so from a money perspective, yeah, it's very different for, for several different reasons all at the same time. And that's a little crazy for me um, because having run a business, in fact, my husband is, he, he says, let's just wait till January to redo our budget at home because I'm, I'm very black and white when it comes to numbers um, because having run a business, you have to do that. But um, lots of change in that area. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and then what about you, for Howie? Is that something that you th you think about money? 
Well, uh, yes, as an executive director, it's my main role to be raising money, uh, but I've also been driving the ship of the organization and our budget has been slashed and how we do things has changed to being online. Uh, so that's been beneficial in expanding our reach, but also how we garner donors and sponsors has been shrunken. Uh, so each day I'm supposed to be working on that part and also the creative part of, uh, well, just how are we operating and how much money do we need? So our budget went from $90,000 to 60 some odd thousand dollars this year. So I'm very conscious of that while we still try to be relevant, but it's not, uh, we've had a little cushion. So in that sense, I'm not sweating the way, let's say other business owners are sweating and our partners and our teachers who are in business are sweating. So I'm very conscious of money and the lack of flow of money in businesses that are small businesses that are our partners, which does affect us because then people are stressed and what they can provide for us, even in the currency of human currency is compromised. It doesn't have to be dollars. For, for me, I'm not the big shopper uh, except to the supermarket. And I've been shopping since I was 10. And the idea of not going to the supermarket and the joy of shopping directly is something I've done for, let's say, over 50 years. And uh, so the idea of handling money and just being out there and being the economy is void, except for takeout. That's what it seems to be, or an occasional essential are sun shops for us. Uh, so I actually get to do FaceTime at the supermarket, which gets us closer together, but it's definitely a novel that I don't even see the money because it goes Venmo after that. So money is really obtuse. Yeah, I really do. Um, I can agree with you. It's very difficult to try to do good with certain things like with your, let's say with, um, you, you know, you call this yoga and we just did the summit and it was, you know, it was knowing that there are so many people that are struggling financially now, no jobs or foundations and nonprofits and, you know, funders that would normally help do things that we were trying to do to help educate people is very hard right now and very stressful. I mean, when I was doing the summit, there was times where I was like, oh my God, are we going to, I mean, what's going to happen? Are people going to buy tickets? You know, it, it was a very stressful thing. And I just kept pushing ahead and just saying, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can and we're doing something good and we just have to keep on, you know, doing it. And that's part of this whole notion of, you know, not giving up and finding you know, finding things to do that, it, you know, I mean, when my, I have to say my husband who does kitchen and bathroom remodeling during the height of the pandemic, the last time, nobody wanted him in, in their house and he wasn't getting any work, none. So he decided to go do something spontaneous, like uh, help clean out gutters so that he could have some money coming in that you know would um that he could do and wasn't a big learning curve where they could you know he could do it and you know they would hire him because they want anybody to do that and just stuff because you just you know you gotta find the the way to do it you know mm -hmm. try to make money and this does affect you know our bodies it does affect you know everything about us and we just have to keep you know just you know, I, I don't have any major words of wisdom, just all my words of wisdom are just talking about it, sharing it. I don't know what the ultimate end game is going to be. And, you know, I know that several, you know, and it's still stress and it's stressful now, just the, not just the pandemic. I mean, that's a huge thing. But then, you know, the election was pretty and still is very upsetting and hard to deal with. And a lot of unknowns that we cannot control. So. Thoughts? Who's got a thought? Anybody? On what you do to help yourself even more? Well, I think getting involved in something constructive for society. And what can we do that's healing uh, 
And my creed is to be a positive and relevant part of the solution. And, and if we can find something that gives some meaning to our society uh, on some way, even if it's, like I said, doesn't have to be money, just the currency of, of purpose. Um, what, and even it doesn't matter if it's what political beliefs one has, is how can one be positive? Because I know even just in the emotional challenges and even in the economic challenges, it's so easy to be down. And uh, I, I'm not in a position of feeling monetarily strained personally, uh, but I feel other people's strain and observe it. Um, and even then they're, they're still trying to figure out some hope and, and some purpose. Uh, and so getting outside helps, but getting in a direction, like you say, what's the mountain is, well, can we, can we just go up the mountain a little bit and just check something out? You know, what, what can be, what could be healing? It's so just that, taking something off your list. Yeah. Even that, just taking something off the list. Sometimes is the big, I mean, you know, if you've gone up and it doesn't work and you keep going up and it ain't working, don't go up, take a break, do something different. Flo, what about you? Well, I was thinking of everything that y'all were saying. I think I, I actually went online the other day and just put in volunteer opportunities because I, it's like, where do I even start? You know, do, I mean, I could, I can definitely start at the church, but even at the church, my church, that I have done a lot of volunteer types of things before. The volunteer opportunities are very different because of COVID. Um, so yeah, I think it always feels good to, to, to get involved in those kinds of things. I also think, um, I think what I've learned is to um, take a far enough step back to really identify what is stressful to you and, um, forever, for the longest kind of time, I, people who know me would probably describe me as being a fairly high stress person. And I, I think I was, I know I have to have a certain level of stress, that Euro stress, if you will, is what fuels me. But if I get too far gone, I know I'm not um, in a good place. And I do want to share that uh, something that happened recently that made me realize, oh yeah, yes, I was that stressed. My son, who's um, 20 years old, often likes to come behind me and rub my shoulders, even though a lot of times I can't even stand for him to touch my shoulders because they're so painful because they're tense, you know, your, your upper traps, which is a place that you carry a lot of stress. And recently he came behind me and I didn't slap his hand away. It actually felt good. And he said, mom, you're, you're not, they're not hard like they usually are. I, I, I said, yeah, don't stop. That feels good. And I, that's the first time that I can remember ever <laughs> that anyone could come behind me. And so I really sat down and thought about that a lot. What was it that had me so stressed, even though I loved what I did, I loved owning the company. I loved helping people and patients and employees and the community. Um, but I was stressed about being responsible, for example, for my employees' livelihood or finances or things like that, or things that I know I spent a lot of time being stressed about things that there's not a whole lot you can do about. Um, so again, I think being able to take a far enough step back so that you truly can identify what it is that is stressful to you and then further identifying kind of what you were saying before about what mountain or hill or whatever is worth um, trying out because you might be able to, to help a situation, but also being smart enough to know, nope, this one's not for me. Um, I think, and I think that's where I am too right now um, in trying to figure out which, which path um, is going to provide that level of stress that I love because I get those good hormones from that, um, but not so much that I get back to the point that you can't touch my shoulders again. Yeah, and I would say that, um, you know, sometimes we look at stress and 
and, and the emotion that comes from it then but maybe sometimes it, it's really enthusiasm or an excitement mm -hmm. as opposed to you know maybe like stress because it sends a different message i think to your body you know if we are excited than if something is you know hurting us but i you know i love how you know you know how we can talk about this now because you know it is there's so many question marks you know one of the things when we were getting started everybody and we were putting our names and you know who we do and what we do and all that stuff you know when we got to flows and flow is always it's, it's never been a question mark of what flow is doing and today when we were just putting down what she's doing because she's always been the co-founder but not the owner now of, of what she's always done it was a question mark we almost put a question mark there and sometimes you know it's 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 okay you know and i know that there are a lot of you that are listening who who might you know say you know well you know i don't know where i'm getting my my food my next meal or what's going to happen in a month and how am i going to pay my rent and you know we're not having this conversation void of that because that can that that is a very real scenario you know i you know i am I'm with you there. You know, I understand. And the, the, the things that we're talking about are, you know, everybody is at a different place with their emotion. Everybody's at a different place on the mountain. Everybody has different mountains. You know, maybe you got a lot of mountains. Um, and, and, but, but the way you, you look at it and the way you come out of it um, is, is, is up to you, but you can. But you can. You can choose to lie on the sofa and let the let the world hit you in the ass, or you can stand up and go, okay, what do I do with a little bit of my next? You know, what can I do with a chunk of my next? And you know, you know, and I and I have great hopes that you will figure it out. Howie, I'd like to uh, mention that some of the mountains that I have are also relationships and relationships that aren't always easy and they're close relationships and once the whole social issues of this year came up things got more challenging and uh, I've really had to push myself to just engage a little bit and that's the the strategy I have is not to expect a lot and not to expect a lot of me when I'm just not feeling it, but when I do feel it, to uh, text or send a picture or uh, make a little video or something that uh, reflects the moment that I could feel positive in the doing. Um, even if it's not grand, I'm still trying to make little progresses up the hills that are internal too. Uh, just feeling down or limited or physically challenged and how can I do things in the yard and feel joy in that and let alone it's still uncertain because the weather is uncertain but I can have the zen of watering something have the luxury of watering something and know it's for a long term but the immediate is I can do a little something and move my body so I have these physical challenges. So it's been interesting with uh, physical challenges that those keep coming too, and that's been interesting this year. Uh, and even just how I throw a Frisbee has changed over the past year and going from right-handed to left-handed. Of course, I'm a little ambidextrous, but now it's uh, just a curious thing of, gee, how am I approaching this game? And oh boy, what's the humility of it and the variability? Uh, but just shifting little bits and keeping the bar low, but still trying to keep it up. So that's, that's important. That. Listen to this, keeping the ball low, just, you know, just day by day, step by step. It, that, that's it. It's not, you know, it's, it's not, it's keeping the ball low and then, and it's not saying you can't do more. It's just keep the ball low. I mean, be nice to yourself. Uh, last week, I think I was walking and it hit me. I'm like, what do I love? Like, 
not liked, but what do I love? And not including people either, because that's easy. But like love, like really in my life, what is it? What are the things that I love? And it, and it took me by surprise because I really had to sit back and go like, what is it? Like, what could, what do I not want to do without? Are there things? And it doesn't have to be like an onload of things. It could just be a few things that I just really love. And I am working on that list. It, w- it wasn't an easy list to think about. And I, like Flo and Howie and many of you, work a lot. So I sometimes didn't even think about that exactly. Or if I did think about it, I didn't think about it in the way I thought about it last week. I was more flippant. It was like, oh, yeah, I love that. But now I really care about what I love. And it matters how I spend my life now. So things do matter. So pay attention. Flo? Well, I was just thinking about what Howie said about relationships and um, how the recent few weeks has really uh, challenged some relationships. But at the same time, when it, one way to flip it around, and the relationship I'm thinking of specifically is that with my young adult kids who have some different views, just like the rest. Uh, I mean, there's so many different views going around, but um, I'm thankful that I, I know I use the word perspective a lot, but I'm thankful that I've lived long enough to be able to have the perspective that I do and um, that they are as excited as they, they get as excited and as passionate as they do about what they feel um, as well and how they look at the world. But then at, at the same time, they, um, they are curious and um, frustrated, just as frustrated, maybe more frustrated. Again, I mentioned my son who's in college, who feels like he's been robbed as I'm sure all of the kids in college right now of a normal college experience because of COVID. Um, and then everything else crazy that's going on in the world. But knowing that it is going to, um, that the, the things that we love, as you say, Marilyn, are, are still there. And, and helping ourselves to remember that, helping our children to remember that, helping those people who are important to us um, because they are a part of those things that we love too. Um, I don't know, I, I, I can get frustrated. I was saying earlier that because I've been home more, I can turn the TV on if I want to and hear a lot more about um, I could up leading up to the election and then post election. I have never been able to do that before. Um, and so that uh, created a diff- a lot of different emotions. But at the same time, if if I could have the perspective to be to take the things that could be positive about what's happening in the world, that's when I was able to deal with it better. And, and that also helped me with my relationships. Um, with my children and other people that are close to me. Good points and really good points. And I, before we go further, I want to show, um, Amnon, can you show Howie's picture there? And Howie, can you tell us about it? There you go. Ah, yes, of course, I'd love to. It's our virtual fundraiser, which is a big deal for us this year because we hadn't done this before. And it's on Giving Tuesday, December 1st. It's all day from 6.30 to 8.30. 11 donation-based classes where we'll have raffles of yoga props throughout the day for day of event donors. Uh, This is a real showcase of our teachers that are part of our ongoing weekly autumn harvest of yoga, which represents uh, what we do each quarter of the year is offer uh, classes six day a week that anyone could join. So this particular day, it's an all-star day, and this is to raise money so that we are offering more international accessible yoga throughout 2021. Uh, we'd love anyone of any skill level. There's all degrees of chair, yin, mat, meditation, family. We are just an open organization, and we hope that you can be inspired to heal a little bit from here or from our website, You Call This Yoga. And also, we're getting lots of support, and I hope 
viewers will check out for All Giving Tuesday, this initiative called Save Our NC Nonprofits. That's being stimulated by this hashtag, Giving Tuesday RDU, which is looking to help our regional nonprofits. So check out hashtag Giving Tuesday RDU. Perfect. And then um, Amnon's got my books, right? Amnon, you have my books, my babies, my new babies. All right. Just one afternoon listening to the hearts of all on Amazon, men, twins, millennials, and people impacted by opioid addiction. They're all personal stories um, where I've interviewed all kinds of people um, from all sides, all men, twins, great relationships. Millennials have so much to teach us and people impacted by opioid addiction. It's interesting when you uh, really listen into the heart of someone who has uh, been addicted or is a family member, uh, you recognize the fact that how important it is to smash any stigma that is not serving us. Uh, Flo, I just want to mention before we go on, have you heard of Activate Good? Oh, yeah, yes. I did see that right as I was finishing my search and I'd had to go, so I, but I wanted to come back to it. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, if you, yeah, they're really wonderful. And um, um, Amber Smith runs it. And so she'll have all kinds of stuff on there. Anybody, you know, for anybody wanting to do, in fact, I'm going to get my mother signed up because anybody that wants to do any kind of, you know, uh, volunteering and maybe just a little bit here, a little bit there, that would be a perfect thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Activate, get it, is, Activate Good has been an active partner of ours for many years. They facilitated this Giving Tuesday process. Oh, they did? Uh-huh. And oh, a volunteer okay. virtual health fair was signed up for. So, yes. Amber, Perfect. Amber is a dear, and so is their entity. Yeah. So, highly recommend it to everybody. So, final word, Howie? Well, I would say in moving a mountain, uh, if you can, pause, take a breath, look around. It's not all straight up. Uh, there's little bit of uh, what we call um, slaloming or uh, trekking diagonally or that uh, it's worth doing and to take a breath along the way. Uh, and for me, what gets me and what I love is uh, feeling affirmation and relevance uh, and uh, being a part of something. So if you're feeling isolated, uh, just come try to engage something that touches some of your one's joy uh, and we welcome you in the yoga community it's not a cult it's a culture ah, love that and what about you Flo uh, regarding mountains I'd say embrace the opportunity um, and uh, as Howie said invite someone to go with you perhaps and take that step far enough back to know what kind of mountain it is or is not. And of course, this week, be thankful. Amen. Just be thankful. Keep evaluate, reevaluate. It's okay to make changes. Nothing is guaranteed as long as you're still breathing. Doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. You know, it really doesn't matter. Find a friend. Find a partner. Uh, whatever you, somebody to listen to you, you know, and I'm always here to listen. So please feel free to always connect with me. I would love it. And we're just happy you're here. I'm happy that we've had this opportunity just to kind of like take a chill and just kind of share. Not every time it's, you know, has to be like, you know, moving a mountain. Sometimes we just want to like recognize the mountain. So I want to thank you both very much for being here with us today. I wish you lots of luck on your Tuesday thing and flow about you, you know, wherever you are in that base, just camp out. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And to thank you and Amnon, who makes fabulous hummus. So I'm sure that once you get back to the studio, you will be well nourished. Absolutely. You're welcome and to come and pick some up. Oh, you have some? I can Make whip it, it up in no time. I know you can. I'm okay. asking. <laughs> I'm not, thank you for everything. And everybody out there, we love you. Happy Thanksgiving, wherever you are. Just 
be just fine. It, it, if you're thankful for that your car goes, just be thankful for that. Just find something to be thankful for. It doesn't matter what it is. Just everything and anything that you can find, small, big, whatever it is, a trinket. Just be thankful. And I love you. Take care. Bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.